पानी पर्यो सर र छाना बज्यो गर र मनमा उठ्यो आज मेरो आनन्दको लहर हिजोको विपना आज भए छ सपना एकान्ची कति चाँडै बितेको यो जीवन हेलो फ्रेन्ड्स नमस्ते दिस इज द हिमाल वर्ल्ड पोडकास्ट एन्ड आई एम द होस्ट ऑफ द पोडकास्ट मेरो नाम हो दिवस कहाँ छ सो टुडे इन द फर्स्ट एपिसोड अफ द पोडकास्ट I have with me one of the most prominent faces of Nepali independent music Mr Bipul Chhetri I am very excited to talk to him about his new EP Samaya and overall what is he doing in this lockdown so we'll have a very very interesting fun conversation in this podcast so firstly let me ask how he is doing how are you doing brother I'm good I'm good I'm good yeah I'm good I mean what can I say I mean you know taking a day at a time uh, you know it's been quite an awful you know mm-hmm. two years continuing so today uh, we're just trying to you know make the best of what we have and looking forward to a you know brighter day let's hope for the best so where are you currently Kalimpong. I'm in Delhi so do you visit Kalimpong because you're from Kalimpong no yeah I'm from Kalimpong I'm born and brought up in Kalimpong I'm a Kalimpong homeboy I do come once every year I mean well if twice at the max summers and maybe during the say if I get the time to so you know what when I first heard you in 2014 your mm. raw voice and the acoustic guitars and the simple worded lyrics uh-huh. blew my mind so you know i am Thank i am you. a very old school country music lover like don williams uh-huh. and screams are my demi gods of simplicity in music uh, lovely so lovely. yeah and and there with there you were uh, singing in such simplicity talking about your hometown monsoons and wildfires you were like too crazy <laughs> for that time yeah so what inspired you to break away from that typical nepali pop music scene of the 2000s what was the inspiration and how did you create to, the bipul chetri style of music i mean it just uh, you know i happened just organically spontaneously maybe that was the kind of music i was into in a sense like you know I, of course i mean of course i'm an old schooler myself and I was listening to Don Williams and all of that, and uh, and of course I was also a lot into you know classical guitar, classical music. I mean all genres of music, but definitely I I I did do one day to have more uh, a raw, a natural, pure sense of music coming from you know uh, old school folk like Bob Dylan or any other. So it it just something which I didn't really sort of try hard to do it. It just just came about the way you know like Wildfire was my first song, first Nepali song that I wanted to that I made, and then it just came about the way. It came about so it was there was nothing intentional you know that had thought really. and and your song dore no while fire blew the mm-hmm. internet especially soundcloud with so many million hits yeah. especially being a mm-hmm. nepali track right yeah so yeah yeah bipul uh, how was your growing up days in kalimpong you went to st augustine school right yes i did i did i go to ss uh, it was like you know any normal child but of course i mean uh, during our times it was i mean we didn't have internet we didn't have any of this kind of thing it was very as i said very organic way of growing up you know we used to just play football with our friends in the rain in the sun climb trees you know if you're hungry you eat out of you know someone's garden you know just <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> uh, you know just steal some guavas or whatever whatever seasonal fruit you find at the pond of time we'd go to visit the rivers often do fishing uh-huh. and stuff like that so i mean you know it was very natural way of growing up we don't have any sort of artificial whatever gadgets to play around with or even food for that matter it was all there's no we didn't have any sort of fast food and sort of that thing so uh, overall i mean in kalimpong i think most of us had a very similar way of growing up in a sense that you know very very uh, similar style of I mean, everything from music to the lifestyle so uh, you know a typical kalimpong kid growing up in the 80s and you know mm-hmm. and even the music there for the initial music that came about was more like rock and yeah typical homeboy from kalimpong i would say like <laughs> okay so were you a part of the school band uh, music band Yeah, we didn't have a school band, school band, but yeah, I mean, and you know, those days it was a big band culture, you know. So I mean, yes, you would yes, have yes. maybe four or five bands in one class. Like, <laughs> if you go around, if you go around the gullies of Kalimpong, you will find maybe every gang had maybe three, four bands. Like, so mm-hmm. definitely, band culture was very big. And you know, when I was a kid, I, I mean, I started singing very early, early on in my life. So I used to sort of hang around with the seniors and you know, play with their bands. And yeah, I mean, of course, band culture was very big, and I did have a band. So you remember uh, performing for the first time on stage? I was in class 3. My class teacher Mr. Justin Rai. He sort of I mean saw in in it I don't know something in me and, and of course he knew my father also who was also a musician and then so he sort of 
put two and two together and he thought that you know he would bet his chances on me and so he said you know people why don't you sort of audition for singing for the school day which is 20th mm-hmm. uh, august so i said yeah why not and then you know he, then he made me audition and i sang and he loved it and then you know and he even chose me a song and the song was uh, buffalo soldier by uh, uh-huh. bob mali <laughs> and yeah so and mr chandra mohan gisling our, our music teacher at the point of time who was of course a mm-hmm. legendary figure he helped me go about the song you know he played the piano and then i sang in the school song and uh, uh, that was in fact the first and the last time even my father uh, came to see me perform and uh, yeah i clearly remember those that day and everybody so you got the group very early on in the school huh? class 3 i was i was lucky i would i mean i i i think you know i mean yeah it was very early i mean so bipul yeah you had a musical atmosphere gorma baba ma sangeet ma ruchi rakhnu thyo uh abo baba jo hunu thyo actually my my father was a musician but you know uh, while i was growing up i mean he was in the british army as well so he was not in the house most of the time and uh, so I mean and then he died on very early on in my life like if soon after a year after that he expired like uh so I couldn't really share a lot of music with him or he couldn't really tell me talk to me about a lot of music but I just remember when I was a kid when I used to be in, at home he, you know and he used to have a lot of friends and all that they would come home you know maybe you know his friends and people who really adored his music so there would be parties you know once in a while and he would you know take out his accordion and you know and start jamming on and so mm. that, that really fascinated me and you know and i think that was what sort of set the course for me in a sense like you know subconsciously indirectly it was steering me towards you know this this direction and so i think he was my first prime uh, you know inspiration sort of to do music and then of course uh, it came natural to me as well so i thought yeah this is you know what my calling is so what did you grew up listening to in your school and college back then you know like as at any mtv or even a good decent a cassette player was very difficult to find like it was oh, yes. you know it was it was a rare commodity and all of that and cassettes were very rare expensive and stuff so like everybody else like listening to local people like listening to my brothers uncles or somebody in my village singing and we'd go to the houses somebody would have a guitar and you know just use circle around that fellow and that person would sing all the time and so that was my first hand experience of music music per se and then sometimes even the original you know songwriter much later than you know when I, when after hearing <laughs> it from all this no, i know what you all this, you know, know what, what i'm you. talking about right yeah so yeah, yeah. Uh, and then generally those days uh, what we what we heard was i mean a lot of you know classic rock music uh-huh. there was a lot of rock bands like let's say play you know, deep purple or floyd or, or jim Moore, the doors uri he all of this and then of course there was bob dylan and there was Uh, Johnny Mitchell there was and of course Woodstock was big i remember watching Woodstock uh, live uh, with my uncle because they, they, you know there was even there was a the VCR player yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i bought it once so also. The, so, uh, so they used to hire his VCR so I mean, yeah. you know we would have like tons of movies like binging on like for like maybe uh, two to three days in maybe you know in couple of months so like so and and these guys would watch a lot of this uh, so I, i watched the entire woodstock i watched the entire the wall you know the movie the wall oh, pink boy yes, yes. so all of that and uh, you know you, you get the gist of the kind of music that i was going through at that point of time uh, when i was growing up Uh, and yes plus and Kalapong course, and our northern part of west bengal it has very strong musical culture yeah and we get to play stuff like that i i remember you know uh, when i was in school like the independence day was quite big and it still is in kalingpong and i remember i was quite young maybe i was in around class 6 or seven you know the main event of that there used to be the main event in, in the field and after that there used you know there used to be fairs and you know this and that and small parties mm-hmm. here and there i remember that at one point in time there was this this video hall in main road next to lux <laughs> and they were okay. featuring the wall live and so that was the the one of the big ticket items that you would go to watch and all and i remember all my seniors were talking about oh wow this is this and that and you know so they were showing this they would either have this uh, you know pink floyd or maybe the queen or something or the other live musical video was going on and you would go to watch that so it was very rich i would say musically in a sense the air was kind of very rich and we were just soaking in it like as a kid uh, you know i was just soaking in all of this different i would hear what my uncle was listening to i would hear what my brother was listening to i would hear what my cousins i would hear you know i would just keep on soaking into all this information that was around me and i guess that sort of subconsciously it was just getting stored in my inside of me that sort of uh, helped me sort of understand and you know sort of analyze yeah so this is a very typical nepali question and most listeners if they yeah. are they are not familiar with the nepali mm. culture mm. this question is did you play in devsi <laughs> Of course, of course. Definitely. Mother, do you see mother bottom? You know it. 
I, I was okay. the I was the main Bhatone guy, and you know, of course, uh, Bhatone would also get the more share and all that. So, oh know, yes, yeah. I was very good at it in sense. I mean, you know, it was very important because it was time to make some bucks, you know. And I used to go to Devos and make bucks. With all that money, I would only buy cassettes. Huh? I would go there was this place called Bharat Studio in Kalimpong. They used to have well, H and V cassette, Pongthio, you know, all of that. We used to display it in the outside in that you know in the glass window, and then I would say, okay, I want this cassette, and I would want to buy it one day, and, and then you know, you, any chance you get, maybe Devos would make some money or in any kind of celebration, anything. Or you know you you I mean you'd find all kinds of all all different ways sort of make money and then yeah. me and my brother used to I mean our hobby was to collect cassettes so any time you'd get some money we'd just go and rush to the market and you know sort of get cassettes that was a favorite thing to do and yeah and Devsi was very so, uh, yeah but you look call yourself as the homeboy Kalimpong from Kalimpong yeah oh. and I yeah. love the way you use nature your surroundings and your music mm-hmm. in the musicality as well as in the lyrics that you write mm-hmm. so what is your typical songwriting process how do you get influenced by that song? Um, about it's there's not no one way to sort of go about it. Songwriting mm-hmm. is is so vast and it's just there's so many multiple ways. Uh, I mean, you know, and and you're still learning and there's no formula to go about it. But for me, the uh, the typical ways it has come is uh, sometimes it comes as an inspiration, like you know, it comes as for example when I wrote Asar as I was growing up, it rained a lot in Kalimpong and it still does. We used to have you know the the roof, the tin roof sound that the rain used to make in the in the roof was like the chara gorsani guy it was like the, yeah oh, was, almost like a white noise you can call it and yes, that was yes. such a beautiful noise for me and it was almost like a lullaby you know like i was i would just so mm-hmm. peacefully go to sleep listen to that sound for some reason that sound gave me a lot of peace and calm and everything so but you know and as i grew up you know i that i wanted to do something about that sound like i wanted to capture it in a song i wanted to sort of cherish it while i was thinking about this idea as i grew up much later mm-hmm. then you know asar sort of came in its form and that was the in its in, in, in inspiration while writing asari so it just followed you know so it comes sometimes as an inspiration dorello was a very it was like imagery in my mind there was it was like a painting in my mind which i had to sort of express so dorello dorello was more visual syndicate was a kind of a poetry came to me as a poetry kata it was like came to me as a poetry so, so was there uh, some kind of a, some kind of a personal narrative behind the song syndicate uh, no it's actually very imaginary it's it's uh, okay uh, fictional uh, kalpani <laughs> you know no, no. i mean i wish it never happened i mean you lucky if it happens to anyone but uh, so it was like i was just you know sort of imagining and just creating that whole storyline sort of and i thought because it was an important thing because it was a feeling which was shared by a lot of people and a lot of my friends is feel a similar way and i of course felt it once in a while but of course it never happened to me but uh, yeah it was it was imaginary definitely i mean so there are, these are these varied ways that songwriting at least has come to me sometimes it comes to me as an issue that i must share like munglan was you know something i I thought that our like especially the Nepali diaspora was facing day by day or since centuries you know going outside to work and this and that so all of that so I mean I would say that there are varied ways but these are the few of the things few of the ways I'm sharing it to you mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. one has to just you know be there when it comes and you know take it and uh, channelize it mm-hmm. uh, into you know into the song right and and it got channelized really well and it placed you somewhere up there and i think you were one of the finest and most known nepali singers from this part of the world yeah well i try i mean i i don't know the finest but i mean i try I mean, i'm glad if, that i've got some listeners and you know that's what motivates me to write more and you know and that's about it so let's talk about samaya your latest mm-hmm. piece right tell me tell me all about it samaya was uh, the entire ep i wrote last year uh, except for one samsara which of course i wrote last year but um, the tune was composed 5 7 years back when i was dwelling in english music before uh, dwelling to nepali music so so samrasara i rewrote it in english uh, because my sonam da my manager told that you know said that you know it fits in very well with the you know the whole concept and said yeah sure uh, so the whole ep happened last year in lockdown in delhi it was me my daughter my wife was just you know locked up in this house <laughs> for god knows how long and so it was a way for me to it was a very depressing situation as you know it was so it was a way for me to find some hope in the entire despair that was going on so it was an escape for me and so it helped me sort of to go through the whole whole year sort of thinking positive as you know everything got you know stopped like all the, all the live performance all the thing that you love to do everything was no more for that particular time and so i had to sort of channelize this energy to for you know positively and find a way to as i said find hope in that old despair and so i wrote about all this basically it was like a personal sort of energy that was going inside uh, mm-hmm. so i was trying to express what i was feeling like and uh, so yeah it was expression of all of that you know uh, that came about it's like that uh, that's such a good utilization of the uh, lockdown <laughs> of being holed up in the house and coming up in a <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah nice. i know nice. i know <laughs> 
<laughs> Sometimes I yeah, think when you're uh, like, you know. Yeah, we pull. I yeah. have a request for you and for all the listeners. Mm. Can you sing one song from the EP? Yeah, sure. Uh, I can sing a little bit of it. so much people and that was such a lovely song so that was bas ghari yaar yeah bas ghari yes so bas ghari is like bamboo bamboo bush you know bamboo what, what do you bamboo call bamboo bamboo yes. it's bamboo bush, you know, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. it's yes. quite it's yes. quite yes. it's quite a thing in it's part of our, our flora and fauna in this part of the world you know yes. in you know, northeast and eastern himalayas yeah. so again a beautiful usage of the nature and surroundings so you have you are, yeah, you've got the mastery in this thing <laughs> Thank you. you. Just, That's whatever, kind. Whatever you see around. I mean, I don't. I don't know if master. Yeah, I don't. I'm still learning. I, I'm just trying my best. Yeah, That's all it is. I'm trying to figure out how to sort of go about expressing what I feel. So you know, that's about it. You know, it's mastery. I think it's a long way to go. Yeah. I mean, so actually, yeah, I have been following your music ever since you started. You debuted with uh, with uh, Sketches of Darjeeling in 2014, right? Yeah. My favorite song was Asar, and which we already discussed. Yeah. Mm. So you know what? Since then, you have created your own style of music, and mm. these days, I hear a lot of you know new musicians, upcoming musicians who have started this, who have picked up this style of music, you know, acoustic singer songwriter. So, do you have any special? Uh, have you taken any note of the upcoming musicians, and do you follow anybody? I mean, unfortunately, I've not really been able to follow a lot of the present because you know, because I've been. so much into full time job and this and that but i have not been following a lot of uh, nepali nepali music but definitely uh, there's a band called uh, gaunle bhai from kalimpong which uh-huh. um, yes, yes yes which 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 i'm very very impressed and you know i really like their music and i i yes. really find them very promising and i was quite uh, uh, you know pleasantly surprised with what they have come up with and and really looking forward i look forward for them to do even more gaunle bhai is something i think yeah i would definitely say they i don't know whether they, but they they're not a very acoustically singer songwriter but they have a very different kind of a setup but mm-hmm. i enjoy the music me too yeah i have heard them perform in bangalore long long time back yeah. before, and before the that i also enjoyed days. before that i also enjoy i i mean i still enjoy tribal rain ah uh, Have you heard Tribal Rain from? I mean, yes, yes, yes. The, we, we the Bhai is no more. The, the lead vocalist. Yeah, yes, Rahul. we lost the uh, Rahul. But uh, some really beautiful, you know, uh, stuff that they brought forward to the plate as well. Mm, so he was very promising. So, the band was very promising. Yes, but. yes. So I can pick these two bands clearly as my favorites uh, so far from the new lot. And do you listen to Hindi Bollywood music? Popular Hindi Bollywood. Music? Uh, not really. I don't know if you really need to listen to Hindi Bollywood music. They are all over the place. You can just walk around and you know what the latest going on. <laughs> <laughs> Not so brother, really, have you, what's there in the pipeline? What, what's what's coming up in future? Kitchen? In the pipeline, couple of ideas that I want to you know go forward with. There is some next project which I've discussed with uh, my manager. So we'll get to know soon enough. But it's just very beginning stage. So we've not really done anything. But it's just an idea. It's, I need to just filter through and just sort of you know design and, and go forward with. You know what? A friend, uh, uh, art director, friend of mine, mm. like during, before the lockdown, he called me. I'm mm. saying that do you know any Nepali? folk musician uh, hmm. nepal like this this part of the world you know so yeah. i suggested your name and devashi's huh. name uh, so i was just wondering uh, are you getting any bollywood and ott projects um we i i yeah we sort of yeah we i mean couple of years back we sort of got something but because of the lack of time and all of that we couldn't sort of commit mm-hmm. to it 
here and there we have some offers from bollywood some offers from even from calcutta you know some uh, bengali uh, me- you know movie music or from nice. something as amis movies and so here and there we get do get but only thing is you know just yeah. the sheer lack of time it's you know I mean, as i said i'm i, I already have a full time job and then a family mm-hmm. and yeah. this yes. already have this project so just hands are so full to sort of didn't think about anything else So uh, yeah I have this question to you as you, as you just said that you have a full time job and you are mm. you are also a very busy and popular musician so is it very very important to balance this commerce and creativity this this maintain this ecosystem to survive as a musician in india especially if you're doing independent music because independent mm-hmm. music sadly is still in the nascent stage is still in the basic stage as you know like i mean the biggest industry which is bollywood in india mm-hmm. is sort of it it sort of bullus has everything it's so omnipresent everywhere so everything else just falls short of its mark to survive doing independent music i would say is is a little difficult so one has to sort of find other ways sort of to sustain your livelihood be it teaching or be it performing you know in other clubs all my friends most of my friends into teaching and you know playing gigs even though they are you know they have their own you know band and sort of albums and stuff like that so mm-hmm. yeah so i would definitely say in india it is still a little difficult to fully depend on your music which is if it's independent music and you know go about your you know livelihood your family so and stuff so basically like which means that you have to work harder than a normal musician yeah that's true and also you have to excel in both isn't it yeah <laughs> you have to give your best i don't know about excel but you you definitely have to give in your best all that you have and rest is up to god to see what you know if you make it you make it if you well, don't make it you, you you did it for yourself in the first place anyway so you know, see so you enjoy doing it anyway so so any word of wisdom for the upcoming new talents from our place kalimpong and darjeeling and second we we have a very talented lot back home you know uh, i think it's there we just have innately we need talent in us produce amazing stuff so we just need to dig in more and uh, you know you know be more original in our approach not to sort of get too influenced by what's around find your own niche find your own sound and uh, find your own originality and go about what you have to do and of course when you decide to do something you have to give in all that you got there should not be any sort of half heartedness give in all that you got and of course patience is one thing keep on working hard enough and one day sooner or later the whole hard work will pay uh, definitely if it's in the right direction so yeah apart from you created your new ep in the lockdown did you perform online gigs yeah i did perform and how was the experience it was strange to say the least because you know you perform <laughs> without an audience and but i mean anything is better than nothing so you know at least i got a chance to perform and you know the whole band got together and it was it was a happy place happy moment for all of us to sort of get back and play some music hopefully it gets better soon sooner than you know than later you know people you see uh, i have a bunch of friends uh, in bombay and in delhi mm. who are huge fan of yours you know uh-huh. they, they go they are right one of one of my friend oh. arjun hanta so mm. i called him up before i you know ring you for the interview uh-huh. I just uh-huh. told him that you know today I am interviewing people. तो वो तो पाग पागल हो गया एकदम. ऐसी पूरी से इंटरव्यू कर रहा है भाई. Oh my god. This episode is easy. Yeah yeah. So he's a Delhi based techy. Exactly. And you know when I met Arjun, we were discussing about this song Asar. Uh-huh. And then I had yeah. to explain him the lyrics. क्या क्यों बना रहा है? बहुत दिन तक नहीं आया वो. Uh or like dithna or a line can you sing this song for especially for me and arjun uh, sure short kadima uh pani pario sara ra chana bajo gara mana ma uthyo aaja mero anand ko lahar hijo ko bipana aaja bhaye cha sapana ekanchi kati chaade biteko yo jivan pani pario sara ra bhijo kale bung sahar कालो कालो बादल चढ़ी फर्की आयो असार थैंक यू सो मच गाइज फॉर लिस्निंग टिल एंड ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट इफ यू लाइक द पॉडकास्ट दैन प्लीज फॉलो एंड सब्सक्राइब द हिमाल वर्ल्ड चैनल रुनि फीडबैक को लगी जस्ट राइट डाउन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन आई विल बी बैक वेरी वेरी सुन with another very very interesting personality from our society till then take care of yourself bye bye